Welcome to DX Sudoku training video number 38. In this video, we will discuss the advanced puzzle solving technique called swordfish. We have highlighted a swordfish pattern to explain what it is we are looking for in the puzzle. A swordfish pattern is very similar to an X-wing, but instead of two sets of two cells, a swordfish pattern has three sets of two or three cells. We are now showing the kill zone for the swordfish. This kill zone is formed the same way as it is with the X-Wing. Just like an X-Wing has a vertical or horizontal orientation, a swordfish also has a vertical or horizontal orientation. We are currently showing a swordfish with a horizontal orientation as indicated by the green highlighting. And the kill zone is up and down along the columns shown highlighted in light red. The logic of a swordfish pattern is pretty easy to understand. In this example, the swordfish is composed of nine cells. If any of the nine cells gets set to a value, this results in an X-wing being created out of the remaining cells. For example, if cell 4, 6 gets set to a value, here is the resulting X-wing. All the cells having a target candidate in our swordfish pattern's kill zone will eventually be killed. The swordfish currently being shown is composed of six cells. Here is the kill zone and target candidates to kill. The logic for the swordfish pattern involves two scenarios. Here is the first scenario. We have a 1 in cell 3, 6. A chain reaction of logic occurs and the results are shown. With the second scenario, we have a 1 in cell 3, 8. Again, this causes a chain reaction of logic and the results are shown. In both scenarios, the result is the target candidates in our kill zone are killed. As stated, the swordfish pattern can have two orientations. The top Sudoku is showing a horizontal orientation, and the bottom one is showing a vertical orientation. When searching for a swordfish pattern in a puzzle, it looks and works the same in both directions. The orientation is also important when figuring out the kill zone and target candidates to kill. Understanding the different types of swordfish is very helpful in finding or identifying a swordfish pattern in a puzzle. We have come up with a naming convention for identifying a variety of swordfish based on cell count and pattern shapes. There are eight different types of subspecies. Subspecies are defined by cell count and cell position. We have identified 15 different swordfish shapes which we will review shortly. We have showed you two different swordfish orientations. Orientation is not considered to be a variety type because the swordfish looks and works the same regardless of its orientation. We have identified 34 different swordfish varieties. The Exodoku video number 39 will show you each of the 34 different types of swordfish varieties. 34 may seem like a strange number. This is because not every subspecies and shape combination results in a valid swordfish pattern. A swordfish pattern can have a minimum of 6 cells and a maximum of 9 cells. The top swordfish pattern has 7 cells. The bottom swordfish pattern has 8 cells. The way the cells are positioned and the shape they form, we will be applying a naming convention. The cell counts per row determine what we call the subspecies with our naming convention. How the cells are arranged we are calling the bone configuration of the swordfish pattern. We are now showing a list of all the eight possible swordfish subspecies we will be identifying. Next we are going to show you the 15 shapes swordfish varieties come in. To the right of each puzzle is how we will label the L-shaped patterns with our naming convention. There are four different L-shapes in our naming convention based on the outer elbow corner position of the L-shape. The top Sudoku here is called an L-shape 3 according to our naming convention. The bottom Sudoku is an L-shape 4. Just like we had with L-shapes, we will also have a name convention for the box shapes. The two swordfish shown on this slide have a box shape having three divisions. There are eight different ways three divisions of boxes will show up in swordfish patterns. The top sudoku is a box three left, and the bottom sudoku is a box three right. We call the top sudoku here a box three L-shape one, and the bottom sudoku is a box three L-shape two. The top Sudoku is a box 3 L-shape 3, and the bottom Sudoku is a box 3 L-shape 4. 
The Sudokus shown here create a box having two divisions in the patterns identified. We will use this naming convention when identifying this variety of swordfish. The top Sudoku is a box 2UL and the bottom Sudoku is a box 2UR. The top Sudoku is a 333 box 4 and the bottom Sudoku is a 323 box 4. These two Sudokus are showing two boxes diagonally from each other. One set of boxes slopes upwards and the other set of boxes slopes downwards. We will use this naming convention when we are identifying these two types of swordfish. Now that you have a good understanding of the types of swordfish patterns that exist, we will turn our attention to how to find a swordfish pattern in a Sudoku puzzle. We are now showing you all the cells having a possible one candidate highlighted in light green. Next we look at each row. We highlight any row having four or more cells in red because it can't be part of a swordfish pattern. We only have three possible rows to choose from remaining, and we recognize we have a valid swordfish pattern. What we are now seeing is a 323 three box 3 right in a horizontal orientation. We establish the kill zone and target candidates to be removed. We visually validate the logic. We remove the non possible candidates from the puzzle. We consider our next example. We are now showing you all the cells having a possible one candidate highlighted in light green. In this puzzle, all the possible one candidates already line up in a valid swordfish pattern, but there are no other possible one candidates to target. We move to the next candidate. All the twos have been filled out. We are now showing all the cells having a possible three candidate highlighted in light green. We highlight all the rows having four or more cells in red. We start with row one as our first swordfish row. But this is no good because the third cell has no connection point. We move to row 2 as our first swordfish row, but this is no good because there is no valid connection to a third swordfish row as shown. We do not have to consider any more rows because there are not enough remaining rows to form a swordfish pattern. Next we repeat the same process, but this time we are looking for a swordfish having a vertical orientation. We highlight all the columns having four or more cells in red. We start with column 4 as our first swordfish row, but this is no good because cell 4, 5 has no connection point. We do not need to consider any more columns because there are not enough remaining columns to form a valid swordfish pattern. We move to the next candidate. All the cells having a possible 4 candidate are now highlighted in light green. We highlight all the rows having 4 or more cells in red. We establish a series of connection points creating 3 swordfish rows lined up in a proper pattern. We found our swordfish in the puzzle. This time we find a 223 box 2 DR type swordfish. We establish the kill zone and target candidates to be removed. We visually validate the logic. We remove the non possible candidates from the puzzle. Time to test what you have learned. Pause the video and find the swordfish pattern. Identify the three rows, species type, kill zone, and non-possible candidates to be removed. Here is the first hint. Rows having more than four cells are now highlighted in red. Pause the video again. Here is the second hint. The cells making up the first row of the swordfish pattern are now highlighted in light purple. Again, pause the video and find the remaining parts of the swordfish pattern. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the swordfish pattern. Here is the first hint. Again, pause the video. Here is the second hint. Pause the video. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the swordfish pattern. Here is the first hint. Again, pause the video. Here is the second hint. Pause the video. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the swordfish pattern. Here is the first hint. Again, pause the video. Here is the second hint. Pause the video. Here is the solution. 
Pause the video and find the swordfish pattern. Here is the first hint. Again, pause the video. Here is the second hint. Pause the video. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the swordfish pattern. Here is the first hint. Again, pause the video. Here is the second hint. Pause the video. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the swordfish pattern. Here is the first hint. Again, pause the video. Here is the second hint. Pause the video. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the swordfish pattern. Here is the first hint. Again, pause the video. Here is the second hint. Pause the video. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the swordfish pattern. Here is the first hint. Again, pause the video. Here is the second hint. Pause the video. Here is the solution. Pause the video and find the swordfish pattern. Here is the first hint. Again, pause the video. Here is the second hint. Pause the video. Here is the solution. This completes the Exodoku training video number 38. Thank you for watching.